Our guy, Andrew Raycroft, joins us on the Harbor One Hotline. Razor, good afternoon now. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Love the parlay picks. I already put them in. I mean, good. hits 34 over. I mean, that's like first quarter. That's how, it's an automatic. Well, we'll see. Let's, yeah, hold on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll, we'll see about that. Don't cash I, it yet. Well, I was going to say uh, more <laughs> yards for... Uh, you know, uh, like more yards for, I don't know, pick a player or more playing time minutes for Charlie McAvoy tonight, Razor. What do you know about McAvoy's return? How much can we expect this guy to play? What do you think? Well, based off of the other guys coming back, there's going to be there's going to be no leash on it. I, I would expect them to to climb towards twenty. Uh, I would assume that's probably the sweet spot, that twenty minute mark. If if the game's close, I, you have Charlie McAvoy on your bench. You're rolling him out, despite the fact he hasn't played a game in six months. So it, I think the 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 handcuffs are off, and he's going to get out there, and he's going to play a bunch of minutes and, and a bunch of different scenarios and a bunch of different situations. And it looks like with Hampus, and I know we talked about it last week about you know the pros and cons of them together versus them split up, but just the way Montgomery has gone about it, do you do you expect to see a little bit of both tonight? I think we'll see. He'll probably play with all five other defensemen, the way, the way Montgomery has <laughs> yeah. moved guys around. And, uh, there's still I, I still can't find any patterns. I still can't find any real reasons why he moves them it's but but it's certainly working there's no question about that so i would expect them to the interesting part will be like how they work on the power play lindholm's been amazing at at, at quarterbacking that uh pk where does he fit in there so it's more a matter of where he slides in but i would imagine you see him with all the guys on the ice tonight so razor what about mcavoy fitting into the jim montgomery style of play he's always been so defensive for his career here in boston now he's got a coach who's going to encourage him to tap into those offensive abilities but we know that can be a double-edged sword how do you think that balances out uh, he, he'll he'll he should flourish similar to to Lindholm and so like all the D for that matter. Clifton's been unbelievable this season. I, I think he he will always be that heavier defensive, still looking to hit guys and be physical defenseman. But he chipped in forty six points last season. I think you know if he gets to forty this year with the the games he's missed, I, I think you'd you'd be excited about that. You'd feel good about that. I think. As you progress and, and as you're a $9 million defenseman in the NHL these days, you do have to produce offensively. I, I think Charlie can do that, and, and I think in this system it, it should allow him a few more opportunities. With all of the negative attention circling the Bruins over the last week, do you think it might make it more likely for them to really try to sign David Pasternak to an extension just to get some positive headlines soon? Uh, positive headlines would be good, and, and David Pasternak signing a, a long-term deal certainly would do that. I think, um, you know, again, I think the holdup, there's a bit of a holdup with the salary cap, and I think everyone's trying to understand exactly, it's still up in the air whether the dollars are going to go up $4 million next year or if it's not, and I, I've got to believe that that is something that both teams and players and agents are all looking at it and, and at this point kind of waiting out to see because, that changes a lot of planning, and it changes a lot of opportunities that players have. No pun. Is the league on that thin of ice that it takes this long to figure out what the cap's going to be next year? Well, it's not. It's not necessarily the thin ice. It's the. It's. It's just so gate driven. So you have, and, and also the other issue is it's the Canadian dollar factors into the NHL salary oh, cap. That I always NFL forget versus- about that. So, so that's where that's a big deal because those six, seven teams in Canada are worth produce twenty percent of league revenue. Last time I was going to CBA meetings, so so that's a big fluctuation. When those dollars, like when that U.S. dollar gets high, that Canadian dollar goes down, that affects it as well. So it's not necessarily thin ice. It's just you have to wait a certain amount of time to get the gate, to get the dollars from Canada into the system to understand where it is. So it's truly loony. Oh, my God. <laughs> Holy smoke. It's like yeah. Scott Boris. <laughs> it's terrible. Thank you. Thank I you very much. I don't care for that. <laughs> <laughs>
care for that. What? That was a good dad joke. <laughs> I don't care. And for it's that. pertinent. One oh, blame bit, Canada boy. for calling it the loony. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm impressed. You know what a loony is, Greg? I'm actually. I'm, yeah, I'm you've never even been there. Yeah, I've never. Oh, Gresh has never been to Canada. Yeah, I've never been there. But in case anybody who hasn't listened to this show for a short period of time hasn't found out, I'm about the money. That's so true. I know what it's, you know what I mean? Like, oh, that is, if Dubai yeah. wants to come in and give me $5 billion for something the way they're about to with John Henry, I uh, <laughs> grab that dough. Done. <laughs> Done, exactly. Uh, circling back to McAvoy, uh, you know, obviously you're expecting, you know, full go kind of tonight, but I'm curious with, you know, a back-to-back Saturday, Sunday, any word yet on that or do you have any expectation on if you'll play in both of those or maybe they'll rest him in one of them? Good question. I didn't, didn't ask that question. Um that that could be that could be touch and go. Maybe that's more how he's feeling. Because again, yeah. it's all you know. The first game, it's all adrenaline. It's you, you feel great. How do you feel in the morning? Uh, how do you feel Saturday night after the game? So I, I would. I, they're certainly in a position where they don't have to play him on Sunday, or they don't have to make him go to Buffalo and play Saturday night. So I'm assuming as the player, you want to just get in and go. But there could be that restriction. I don't think there's many restrictions, but that. Keith could be the one that he does have this weekend. Well, that'll be interesting to see. Andrew Raycroft of uh, Course Nested and right here on WEEI, breaking down hockey with us on the Harbor One Hotline. Um, is this the real Nick Foligno? Yes, it, it's, it, it is. He, he can sustain this. There's no question. I think we the concern was last season could have been the real Nick Foligno now. Uh, I think that was certainly a concern for everyone and, and probably somewhere deep down himself as well. But, but no, what he's doing now is completely repeatable. He's getting in on the four check. He's got an extra step. He's getting to the front of the net. There's nothing, there's no smoke and mirrors with what, how the, the start of the season's gone for him. And so in, in those respects, I, I do believe that there's no reason why he can't continue this all season. I saw uh, Jeremy Swayman apparently ahead of schedule, which is uh, seemingly on par with everybody else on the Bruins. <laughs> the The training staff has been outrageous. I don't. Are they setting these like long timetables just so they could be uh, way ahead of the game or whatever? But what what are you hearing on uh, Swayman? Uh, yeah, I've I've he's not on the ice. So yeah. with the goaltender, that's the big one. You, you know, you can feel better. I, I, it sounds like they dodged a bullet in the way that injury looked. It could have been real bad, could have been real ugly, the position that he was in. Mm-hmm. So he's, he is ahead of schedule. He is getting around, but I'm always cautious because I've been in that position where you feel great, and then you put the pads on, you do one butterfly, and it's, you're, you're another five days behind, and you have to really pull back. So uh, it, 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 he's in a good spot. He is coming back, but... Until they get the gear on, until they get skating, I think everyone's a little hesitant to say way ahead of schedule. Uh, Razor, do you worry about uh, guys on the wing playing on their offside? Is that, like, overblown, or is that a real thing that that Jim Montgomery's got to be aware of? Well, certain guys it is. Certain guys have been used to doing it. Um, It's it's an issue in the defensive zone. So, again, if you're on your off wing, you have to handle more passes on your back end because and you have your back turn it's a little harder to see the play behind you when you're on your backhand when you're on your offside so it can be a bit of an issue in zone the good news is the Bruins haven't spent a lot of time in their zone they're doing a great job closing out and getting up ice on the rush it can be effective on the uh, on the rush offensively guys like it because they get that one timer a little bit early on those seam passes so it goes both ways. Some guys are more comfortable than others. The Bruins, Montgomery would have a handle on the guys that don't mind it. The other thing is, and, and this is the real bonus right now the Bruins have, there's so many guys on that bottom six especially that are competing and playing well. You're, you're, whatever it takes to stay in the lineup, to get in the lineup, you're doing it. So you're not going to complain, ah, I don't really feel great on my off wing if someone else is willing to take your job. So you get out and you do it and you figure it out. Really scary injury on Tuesday night. Evander Kane had his wrist slashed by a skate blade, and it was announced he's going to be out three to four months. What's the worst or nastiest injury you saw while you were playing? It was that was ugly the other night. That was really ugly. And, and skate skate cuts are always the worst. Um, I, Carlos Scratchton, a, a guy I played with in Dallas, got one similar on the wrist, and. It's, it's panic mode right away. And when, when guys react the way they do, 
uh, everybody on the bench, it's rattling. It yeah. really is rattling. And everyone's trying to find out what's going on. And it, it, it sets you off because you think about the bad things that have happened and, and the skate blades. So it, it, the, the skate one's the worst. I've seen one similar to Kane's and, and that feeling of blood is, is, is shocking instantly and uh, not one you want to see too often. That Clint Malarchuk one, like, oh I, my God. Oh, I remember oh, the I will, video I won't watch of that. that clip. Yeah, Even though I'm done playing, I won't watch it. Yeah, that is, really? that is gruesome. Yeah. yeah, no, that's that's not good. Did not you good ever have that kind of worry? Uh, no, it's no, because it, it's so odd. But there's times when you're like, whoa, that was close, mm. right? Like, the game's happening so fast, and you, you, you have that. We've all played sports. All the time, you you have that hindsight feeling where whoa, that was close, or, or that was way too interesting, um, and you kind of wipe the brow off your the, the sweat off your brow. That's uh, it's scary stuff. Andrew Raycroft with us for a few more minutes. Uh, what can you tell us about the Calgary Flames that hasn't already been told? Well, they kind of stink right now. Similar to the St. Louis Blues, they they lost six in a row. They're blowing leads. They've blown, I think, three two-goal leads in the third period. They just did it to the Islanders the other night. They're playing their third and fourth game on the road tonight. So very similar mentality the Bruins should have from the game on Monday night with St. Louis. They're good. They have good players on the roster. They they look good on paper. They're not playing well. You have to really play good defensive. Don't give them any free opportunities to start feeling good about themselves and really just wear them down. So, again, good players made a bunch of moves in the offseason, but they're struggling right now, and you really want to keep that struggling team down. It's, it's, struggling teams are dangerous in the NHL because at some point they're going to snap out of it, and, and you don't want it to be against you. And get a look at Milan Lucic coming on back. I was looking it up. He's playing like 10, 11 minutes a night, still out there. Uh, yep. Not a guy you want to, uh, you know, get mad at. You don't you. want to trifle no, he's, with he's him. Don't want to deal with that. But uh, no, yeah. no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, he he has a he's he's providing a, 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 an important service to this Calgary Flames team. Uh, certainly doesn't get around the same way he did before. But uh, similar to last year, he he he's important. That line that he's on has an identity, and it's it's getting in on the forecheck and being hard to play against. And again. That's the kind of thing you want to take advantage of those guys in the defensive zone. You don't want to let them get going and get their forecheck and get their hits going. And, and certainly, Luch is going to be a little bit more motivated as he always yeah. is coming back to Boston. Oh, he used to beat the snot out of guys. I mean, he was really yeah. one of the perfect for that run where they were winning two to one. Yep. He was really uh, like the perfect kind of player to put him there with Krejci or whoever he was playing with. Like, he was, he was oh, awesome. For everybody loves an ass kicker. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and there was guys that he could fight back then too, yes. right? Like, yeah, yeah, right. but yeah. now no one's touching him. No, no one's going away. All these <laughs> guys that are like 160, they're like yeah. not a chance. No thanks. He's got no takers in the league right. anymore. But he used to, and it used to be very quite interesting. Yes. Uh, all right, Andrew Raycroft, who goes into the tickle trunk this week? Oh, jeez. Um, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know we were doing it this week. So I let me think. Uh, oh, that's okay. Uh, you can stuff Scotty Wah back in there. He, he yeah, that's that true. Put Scotty <laughs> Wah back in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't do him again. I know that's, that, that stinks. But uh, Charlie McAvoy, let's put him okay. in. Let's get him going right away. Uh, I'm expecting two points tonight plus three for Charlie McAvoy. I'm going to look up the odds on that and, and put down yeah, a bet. Yeah, Ooh. Yeah, and is, uh, is Brett the Hitman Hart still the most famous person from Calgary? <laughs> yes, the, without question. And his hate for Vince McMahon is is accepted across Canada. Wow, there very we go. Good. All right, very good. I had to get the Canadian wrestling yeah. in there too. I watched the documentary on Stampede Wrestling the other night. It was all right. Yeah, yeah, it's great, right? Yeah, it was all right. It was pretty good. Yeah, it's okay. uh, it's yeah. an old time territory. It's a, it's a different territory. watch compared to what you're used yeah. to. Yeah, it sure was. Razor, were you a big wrestling guy when you uh, like? I'm assuming in Canada because Bret Hart was big. Everybody at least was aware of wrestling when you were growing up. No, well, certainly, yeah. We and 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 Owen Hart, his brother, that mm-hmm. tragically passed away. Yes. That was that was horrible. Uh, yeah, Raw was around what the late nineties. Raw was yep. a big deal, right? Like oh, the yeah. Rock and Austin. Yeah, that was. So I probably I was involved in that a little bit then, but uh, but yeah, I mean, Brett the Hitman, the, the Hart family is is wrestling royalty in the world, let alone in Canada. So it's go. it's a big deal. We know about it, and 
And, and we know that Vince screwed Bret Hart at WrestleMania, was it, in Montreal? Uh, no, 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 it was uh, Survivor Series, Survivor I think. Series, it, was, uh, it was in November, yeah. yeah, yeah they, they, <laughs> none that, of us were happy about that. That no. was something. Well, Razor, thank you, friend. We appreciate Thanks, it, and uh, we will uh, catch you soon. Thank you. You got it, gang. Have a good weekend. There goes uh, yep. Andrew Raycroft.